Hey, welcome back, everybody. My name is Ray Lucia Jr., CEO of Lucia Capital Group. And, uh, you know, we got such a great response from last week's uh, uh, video that we did from our home TV studio. We're not back into the office just quite yet. That we decided we'd do it all over again and introduce everybody to another one of our certified financial planner professionals. Welcome to the show, Jonathan Savona. Um, how you doing, Jonathan? Great to be here, Ray. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. And uh, definitely working hard and in the office uh, alone, myself, but appreciate you having me on here. Yeah, that's great. You know, Jonathan, we've, uh, we've been working together for, for quite some time. I think you, you actually uh, started back in 2006 time frame and in, uh, in this industry. And uh, so this is kind of like 2008 a little bit, you know, refresher course. And so, um, you know, it's been great. You know, what I like about you, Jonathan, is the way that you conduct business is it's kind of like the way you golf, you know, you know, for everybody out there, Jonathan's like one of the best golfers that I know. He's my partner every year and member guest tournament. I think over my shoulder here, Put up our championship trophy from 2016. Oh, you first two. Awesome. Awesome. And, uh, you know, right down the middle of the fairway, dude, every time. Well, one of us needs to hit it in the middle. So I'll, I'll just say that. One of us needs to. Well, that's why, that's why we're a good, you know, <laughs> we're a good scramble team. We're a good team. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm like, <laughs> you're just like right down Force the middle. Force my hand there. So just like he plays golf, he delivers advice right down the middle. So, uh, you know, getting to it today, you know, Jonathan wanted to talk about the CARES Act. And, um, you know, he's got a couple uh, uh, kind of right down the, the middle uh, uh, advice right off the top and some strategies that everyone should at least think about or maybe know somebody that it may apply to. But on 30,000 foot view level, we're going to put up this slide here that talks about how kind of just tries to simplify the whole CARES Act that passed last weekend uh, into like five broad categories. You know, the first category is what everyone's really concerned about right now. Uh, some have called it the helicopter money. It's in the category of recovery rebates. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about that. There's also uh, some special ways about how you can take distributions from your retirement accounts uh, uh, and, and not have to pay your 10% uh, early withdrawal penalty and uh, spread out your tax liability over a number of years that got passed. There's other provisions uh, that talk about required minimum distributions. And so if you're a required minimum distribution age, you know, stay tuned because Jonathan's got some cool planning idea as it relates to that. Uh, unemployment benefits uh, have um, uh, been enhanced. And what you hear about in the news a lot is all the small business benefits. And so we don't really want to go over all that because there's plenty of information out there on the internet for the small business uh, folks. But uh, what we want to talk about today is really uh, two key components of the provisions that were passed that affect individuals. And so with that, you know, Jonathan, why don't we talk real quick about the helicopter money recovery rebates? You know, what's what's going on there? Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt this is a confusing and detailed act with a lot of moving parts. I imagine people are confused and they want a little bit of direction on uh, especially what affects them the most, uh, whether it be as an individual or a business owner. So uh, yeah, the first one would be this rebate check and who gets it? Do you qualify? When will you receive it? So we thought we'd cover that a little bit. The important thing to know is that it is a act, actually a 2020 credit. It's an advanced credit against 2020 income, which is confusing, but what they do is look at 2018, 2019 income. And if you qualify, qualifications would be 75,000 and under for individuals, 150,000 AGI adjusted gross income and under for uh, married filing joint uh, tax returns, you qualify for the full credit. Also, if you have children under the age 16 and under, you receive an extra $500 as part of that credit. So there are some who won't qualify. Uh, if you are 17 and older and you are you know, maybe in college or qualify as a dependent, not taking care of yourself financially, you unfortunately will not qualify for that. Um, All right, good point. And these, these payouts are gonna start soon. We're, we're keeping an eye out for any new information. It's a, 
it's a it's kind of an evolving situation, right? I mean, it's yeah. Every day it's an evolving situation as they figure out how they're going to pay. You know, a massive amount of checks. Yeah, but I think what was really cool, you know, we were talking earlier about this. Like, there's there's a strategy there, right? Because there may be some people that are on the cusp because you get phased out, you know, you start phasing out over the seventy five thousand individual and one hundred fifty thousand married filing joint your adjusted gross income. So um, some folks might kind of be on the bubble, right? Where they, they may they may have had some income uh, uh, um, increase, maybe a, 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 some one-time event happened last year or whatever. So, you know, can you explain a strategy that you're, you're talking to people about? Yeah, what we've discussed is the advantage of looking at two different tax years um, is that you can look at 2018 and 2019. And have you filed yet? If your income is higher or lower, you might want to consider either filing quickly and getting that 2019 return in if your income has been lower or was lower in 2019 compared to 18. On the flip side, if your income was higher, we had a, you know, a, a high flying marketplace last year. Income could have been higher on your tax return in 2019. If you haven't filed yet, you might consider delaying that and uh, qualifying. But either way, if you don't qualify, and in 2020, if your income does qualify you, you will be able to get that credit, but you'll have to wait until next year, basically a full year from now, to reapply for this credit against 2020 income, which might have dropped you below those thresholds. Right. So the 2020 money might not come until you file your tax return, but it's 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 interesting how they structure this. So there's there's some strategy, which is really cool. You look at your 2018 potentially if you haven't filed your 2019 tax return. Yet, and that that may be a triggering point for what you, what you do and how you go about doing it. Um, pretty cool. Now, yeah, moving you know, on. You know, real quick, Ray, I'll point out that um, more information can be received irs.gov/coronavirus. You can receive more details, updated details. Be aware of scams on on these things. Emails. You will not receive an email. You will not receive a call from the IRS. This is mail driven. So just be aware of any scams that could be out there. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and we, we bring this up from time to time. They're not calling you. There's no uh, investigation or anything. We get these kind of robo calls all the time. We get people calling, is this real? You know, I did a video, I think it was a couple of years ago where where even my wife was, was you know, super mm -hmm. stressed out going, why, why am I getting this crazy phone call? And I had to tell her it was just a scam. And so, yeah, that's, that's great advice, Jonathan. And, and, and there's also a guide that uh, that's in the works that we're working on to, to cover some of these things that we're talking about today. But moving on, and this is another, um, you know, that's kind of like the upfront, um, straight and narrow, this is what's happening with the helicopter money. But but there's this this uh, strategy you want to talk about for folks of, of required minimum distribution age. And this, this was kind of thrown in there and and financial advisors across the country just started talking about just this past week and coming up with ideas and strategies. And, and I think you have a really interesting take. So why don't we go through exactly what it is and then the strategy you're, you're, you're thinking about for, um, for people to consider. Yeah. I mean, there's millions of retirees out there who are in this phase of required distributions, required minimum distributions. And recently the age changed. So now at 72, you have, uh, based on an IRS provided table, uh, a, a factor, an amount you need to take uh, and distribute from an IRA account, a retirement account, in order to draw that income from those accounts. So one unique rule in the CARES Act is that they have canceled that for 2020. And really what that does is puts the power into your hands. You have now the ability to maneuver your taxable income, your tax planning, in order to take advantage of potentially the market drop or just avoiding some of that income. So, so, so go ahead. Sorry, so go ahead. a few of those ideas would be that, obviously, if you still need that draw, if, if that's your main source of income, you'll have to continue taking that, and that's fine. Um, but if there's the ability to look at your tax bracket and you do have flexibility, then there's a few things you can do. A Roth conversion is a popular idea, especially when market equity market valuations are, are potentially depressed. You yep. can uh, you know, distribute that, convert it to a Roth IRA, use up a potentially low tax bracket. And we're talking about a 12% federal tax bracket, which might be a low rate. 
but convert that IRA money over, maybe it would have been your required distribution. But at this point, you are converting that, paying taxes now at a potentially lower tax rate, converting it to the Roth and letting that growth happen in the tax-free area of a Roth, uh, Roth IRA. Yeah, so the, so the strategy, if you will, is even if you were to take your required minimum distribution, you could do a Roth conversion just pay the same tax you, you would have paid anyway, but you can take the, even, even do a distribution in kind. You don't have to sell securities, but you can move them into the Roth. And then hopefully if the markets rebound, you can get that growth inside your Roth on a tax-free basis, rather than leaving it in your IRA on a tax deferred basis and paying future tax down the road on the, on the. On right. the so, so that's a common strategy that folks are going to use also. You know, if you don't need the distribution, you have a one year reprieve. So some might want to turn it off entirely and just save the tax. Keep in mind that the higher your income, potentially the higher your Social Security taxes are, potentially the higher your Medicare premiums are. So if you have now control, especially if you have other accounts to draw from, which are more tax friendly, you might save more than just that distribution. You might be saving on stealth taxes and costs uh, throughout your tax return. Very good. So, well, are there any other things you'd like to share with, with the group today? Well, you can still give to charities directly from an IRA. That is still the qualified charitable distribution, still allowed if you're 70 and a half or older. So if you still give to charity and you still want to do it to avoid taxes, you can still distribute from an IRA. And uh, those rules have not changed. You do need to be 70 and a half when you complete the distribution. So remember that. Jonathan. Um, this is really good, Jonathan. Uh, thank you for, for sharing all this fantastic information. You know, um, yeah, I know you're in the office right now and you may not have the, you know, gone as stir crazy as, as some of the others that are out there that are working from home. But um, if there was, um, you know, one thing you're thankful of going through this whole coronavirus crisis. And what would you share with everybody? What, what are your thoughts on that? I'm just curious. Yeah, I've got three kids there at home. And uh, at this point, we're spending more time together because, uh, you know, sports are canceled. And so we, we don't want to be outside as much at this point. So we're together and we're, we're actually walking through the Marvel series. We're watching every movie. So we're spending a lot of time together. And I think that's what we need to use this time, uh, you know, to do to be safe, but also spend time with those we love. That's great. Yeah, I'm seeing the same thing here. So, well, maybe we'll have you back again, and you can tell us how Endgame ended up. Uh, I still haven't seen the final. Too soon. Final. Yeah, too soon. Too soon. I know you got a lot of movies to, <laughs> to go through, brother. So, uh, thank you so much, and for everybody, you know, really appreciate you tuning in and watching this video. Share it with your friends and and. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, the email address, askraydjr at luciacap.com. Uh, also, don't forget about our podcast. Um, you can subscribe to our podcast. We'll have a Chiron up on the screen there on how to do that. And, um, you know, just stay safe out there and uh, be careful and, you know, enjoy the time with your families and um, stay safe. Okay. God bless to everybody. Take care and we'll see you again soon. Thank you.